powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us this Monday here on the Statewide Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. Well, it was a deadly weekend on Montana roads. We begin in Billings where a crash in the Billings Heights claimed the life of a 20-year-old woman and sent two others to the hospital over the weekend. The head-on crash happened early Sunday morning near Wicks Lane in the Heights. Billings police say a car driven by a 16-year-old male first collided with a pickup truck and then fled the scene, hitting another car and causing the fatal crash. When officers arrived, they found the 16-year-old unconscious with serious injuries. They also found two 20-year-old women in the second car. The driver was pronounced dead on the scene. The passenger was seriously injured. Emergency crews had to extricate the teen and surviving passenger before transporting them to the hospital. The driver of the pickup truck that was first hit was not injured. This crash is still under investigation, but police say speed and alcohol are considered to be factors. And one man is dead and another injured following a weekend ATV crash in Park County. The Park County coroner has identified the man as Caleb Carroll, a 23-year-old out of Great Falls. Carroll was the passenger on an ATV, which was driven by a 20-year-old woman from California. According to Montana Highway Patrol, the woman was driving too fast for the road conditions and failed to make a turn. She overcorrected and then lost control of the vehicle. Both the driver and Carroll fell off the ATV. Carroll was pronounced dead at the scene. The female driver was transported to a local hospital. There's no word yet on the extent of her injuries. And in Teton County, Montana Highway Patrol is investigating another crash Sunday morning. We're told a 32-year-old Conrad man was driving eastbound on Highway 219 when he failed to negotiate a left-hand curve 10 miles southwest of Conrad. The vehicle ran off the right side of the road, hit an approach, and then launched 156 feet into the air. The vehicle then rolled several times. The driver was not ejected but was pronounced dead on the scene. Emergency personnel arrived on scene just before 5 a.m., but authorities do believe the crash may have happened any time between midnight and 4 in the morning. Alcohol and speed are suspected factors in that crash. And in other news this Monday, the Cascade County Sheriff's Office is investigating two deaths at the Pelican Point Fishing Access Site near Cascade. Sheriff Bob Edwards tells us around 4.30 yesterday, deputies were called to the scene for a report of two dead bodies found at the site in a vehicle. Sheriff Edwards says foul play is not suspected and the deaths are not river related. This is an ongoing investigation and more details are expected to be released later today. The names of those involved and the manner of their death has not been yet been released. You can check back with us on air and online for the latest on that investigation. And new today at noon, the Miles City Police Department has opened up a criminal investigation into a former longtime Miles City athletic trainer accused of sexually abusing what could be hundreds of boys decades ago. We have just learned from the Miles City Police Chief that James Doc Jensen was interviewed by police. Miles City Police Chief Doug Kollenbeck first confirmed this to this department is working closely with the State Division of Criminal Investigations within the Montana Department of Justice and with the Custer County Attorney's Office. Columbic tells us they are dropping everything to work on this investigation. A lawsuit filed Friday alleges Jensen sexually abused male students at Custer County High School in the 1970s until he was fired from the district in 1998. The lawsuit identifies 19 victims but states there could be over 100 still out there. Also new today, the Montana Department of Justice has resources working this ca case around the state and in Miles City. On Saturday, the DOJ established a hotline for any alleged survivors of Jensen to report their allegations. That number is on your screen. And now we're turning things over to Connor in the Weather Center. Connor, uh, just became fall over the weekend, so what does that mean for our weather? In, indeed it did. Saturday afternoon into Sunday, Mother Nature saw fit to remind us that it was indeed fall. We lost about 20 degrees across much of the state from Saturday into Sunday, so we did then have that fall feel, and it's going to continue to be that way. The Center for Climate Prediction is telling us in the longer term outlooks that we have both a wetter outlook as we're seeing here across much of the country really for the next uh, for the early start to fall here in Montana, 40 to 50 percent chance of above normal chances of rain and much even higher than that numbers for chances of below normal temperatures. So likely cool and rainy to kick off this start to fall. And that does include here today, this afternoon. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in the full state forecast in just a little bit.
Thanks, Connor. Well, over the weekend in Helena, hundreds of people came together to help break the stigma surrounding mental illness. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian was there for the annual Montana NAMI Walk. Despite some rain in the area, a large crowd turned out Sunday afternoon for the 15th Montana NAMI Walk. Organizers say the event has grown every year. It shows the level of how many people in Montana care about mental illness, how many people in Montana care about providing the best services and the best care. The walk began in Memorial Park. Participants then walked through Centennial Park and around the Carroll College campus. Caitlin Tennis has been taking part in the NAMI walk for more than a decade. She says she's seen a big change in that time, with some of the stigma around mental illness beginning to break down. When I was in high school struggling with mental health myself, there really wasn't anything, like no place I could really turn to to get the help I need, but it has grown so much in the years since this walk has started. Cami Heck is Miss Montana's outstanding teen. She's seen how mental illness has affected her family, her hometown of Sydney, and the entire state. So she's spending her year as outstanding teen, encouraging people to talk about it. We need to realize that mental illness is real. It's a disease and it's not something that you can snap out of or shake off. And it's something that needs attention. It's not something you should silence or be ashamed of. The walk not only raises awareness for mental health, it also raises revenue to continue NAMI's support programs. NAMI Montana and our local NAMI affiliates just can't function and thrive without the NAMI walk and our generous supporters. Those who took part in the walk say they want to give a clear message to people facing mental health challenges. You are not alone wherever you are in your life. Someone will be there to help. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Thanks, Jonathan. And NAMI Montana estimates one in five families in the state of Montana are affected by mental illness. Well, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon here on the statewide noon news. Coming up, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein in the hot seat after a week of controversy. Now a meeting with the president later this week. What it all means is coming up. But first, Connor's in with a full look of the forecast as we start this first full week of fall. We'll be right back. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.